This time, Odd's interview guest is multi award winning filmmaker and actor Harley Wallen. He has starred in over 40 feature films and TV shows with legendary stars such as Tom Sizemore, Tara Reid, and John Savage, among many others. In 2016, Harley and his wife Katie formed the film production company Painted Creek Productions. The one thing he really takes pride in is his commitment to the character he is playing, regardless the size of the role or the paycheck. Harley is now writing, producing, acting and directing and has found his life's purpose. We enjoyed speaking with Harley. We hope you enjoy this interview. Okay, Harley. You have yes. made it through all of my other questions about your career and you have survived. Are you I ready have. to play interview roulette? I am ready. I asked you to pick five que- or five numbers before we got started and I told you they corresponded to questions. These are their questions in the order that you chose them. I'm not going to tell you the numbers because I don't want other people to watch this and be like, okay, I don't want that number. Yeah. Question number one. All right. What word or phrase do you say too much? Oh, Oh, man. I probably say bro to too many people. That are so not bros. I, I, I am I, I, I'm a bit of a slut when it comes to that word. I, I, I dish it around. <laughs> you are a bro slut. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. <laughs> Question number two. What is your kryptonite? Oh, oh good food, man. What uh, uh, cuisine? Guess- what specific cuisine? Oh, I'm not even that like, it's just good food. Like, um, so a great steak will make me lose my marbles. Uh, salmon can make me lose my marbles. Um, really good. Like Kung Pao chicken is like, it's, I have so many meals that I love. My mom's cooking pretty much everything she makes. Um, my wife's Mac and cheese is just, I don't even understand it's just, just mac and cheese, right? Like, right. why is it magical? I don't get it. Let me ask you this. Your wife's mac and cheese, does it go in the oven? It is. Uh, no, she makes it first in a thing. Then it goes in an oven. Right. With, That's why. Yes. Yes. It goes okay. in the oven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's why okay. it's good. Um, all right. So we've established your uh, slut for the word bro and a slut for food. Let's keep it oh, rolling. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I am. <laughs> what would be worse? You can't play music anymore or you can't listen to music anymore. Because of the fact that I'm not as talented as I'd like to be, uh, definitely listening. I, and and li- I use music all the time. Uh, so when I am in a mood, if I need to chill, you know, you get some Bob Marley on, it's like my shoulders go from here to... Uh, and when I'm driving, I can literally drive from here to Miami uh, without a problem. You get me some classic rock and uh, uh, throw some metal in around the corner and, uh, and give me maybe some, uh, uh, some hardcore, you know, uh, music alongside with that. Like just stuff that moves me. I, I love that uh, because I used to be a break dancer. I love th- that whole uh, R&B, hip hop. Uh, as well, uh, I I do like the old style of hip hop a lot better than the new style. I uh, I think the you know Run DMC was the height of it all, and I think we we've, we've never recovered. Wow. Uh, Actually, so. no, there's still a lot of good new hip hop. The the problem is is people don't realize that rap and hip hop are separate. Rap yes. is it. Rap is the the crap that gets prepackaged and shoved down your throats. That sounds like they're half drugged when they're singing it. Yes, hip hop uh, has a message, uh, yeah. and you don't hear a lot of that on the radio because it has a message. It is intelligent, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I agree you. with you with that for sure. Okay, what is something that you love that is considered vintage? Oh, vinyl. Oh, yeah. I love vinyl. I, I, I play way more records than anything else. I, it, we have all kinds of means to do this. The only time that I don't listen to vinyl 
is when I'm not home. If I'm home and I listen to music, it's vinyl. Yeah, I got to agree. I, I have a record player and I bought it a couple of years ago and my wife was like, why are you buying that? And I was like, because I really like how vinyl sounds. The, the, yeah. Like CD quality is texture. fine and everything, but yeah, there's so much texture and warmth and, and, and life yeah. in it. Not every artist sounds good on vinyl. I will say that. Oh, yeah. You're um, right. You're absolutely right. But I, I got uh, I got a, a an album from an artist named Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. Mm. He's He's got this old vintage sound to him, and he's a newer artist. And his album on vinyl was just perfect. That vintage awesome. sound that he had mixed with the warmth and the hiss and the clicks and the pops that come with vinyl. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I highly some, recommend it. I have to check that out. There's a Haley something that does the jukebox. Haley Reinhardt or something like that. I and so. I, I didn't even realize that jukebox sound is like, I think her name is Haley Reinhardt or something. I, I'll look, but it's the same thing. There's just something kind of magical about it. And I believe in that stuff. I really do. I remember, you know, having my first meeting at Chateau Marmont in, in, in Hollywood. And it was like, you can feel all the greats who has been there, who is, you know, it's uh, all that aura is around and, and in the air. It's just, it's just crazy, but, it, but you, you can feel it. It's tangible. And the same thing with vinyl, that texture, it's a, a, a new dimension, extra new dimension. Yeah, and I've got a bunch of records and stuff. I've got all my mom's old records and whatnot, and like just the the tactile feel of the record and the the slip cover. And if yeah. you go back far enough, they have all those really cool inserts. Um, yeah, I've got an album Posters stored away and all kinds of stuff. It, yeah, it's a Three Dog Night album, and it's got the uh, uh, the tarot cards that were in it, the oversized cards. Oh, um, nice! I've got a copy of Cheech and Chong's uh, The Big Bamboo, and it's still got the rolling paper in it. Oh, dude, that's awesome! Yeah. And I know most of you that are watching this are wondering how the hell does it still have the rolling paper in it? We know you like the jazz cabbage. <laughs> I have respect. That's why it's in there. <laughs> yep. But okay. you wanted to. <laughs> oh, many times. I've always been too broke <laughs> to try and fill that thing. Um, okay. Last question. Now I know yeah. you said that your uh, your musical ability isn't as as good as it, it could, you'd like it to be, but imagine yeah. if you did, you were at a level where you would like it to be. If you could mm -hmm. go on tour and open for any artist, living or dead, oh, who God. would it be? I'd say the Stones uh, farewell tour, man. Which one? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the the last one. Okay. <laughs> Because I think they've said farewell like six times Oh, now. they've been saying bye now, and you're still here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, they, they still somehow do it. You know who we saw a couple of years ago that would kind of surprised me at how good? Brian Adams. Yeah. That dude, he sounds better in, in a live performance than his records virtually. And he's, like, he's not aging either. I'm like, is he a vampire? <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's Canadian too, so it could be a Canadian vampire. Oh, it's just because they've got better health care. That's all. That's probably <laughs> it. You're right. Dude, you're probably not a joke. All right, Harley Wallen. Thank you so much. I've had a great time talking with you. I hope it's been good for you. Yeah, uh, this is this has been awesome. And we definitely gotta link up. We have too much in common. <laughs>